Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the thermal cutoff kit. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the jumper wire, two screws, two connectors, the instruction sheet, the high limit thermostat, and the thermal cutoff. The main reason you'll be changing a thermal cutoff kit is if the thermal cutoff has actually gone bad and your dryer is not drying the clothes. The thermal cutoff is contained in a kit which contains the thermal cutoff and a high limit thermostat and you have to change them both. In order to access the inside of the back of the machine, we have to remove all the screws that hold the back panel on. These are quarter inch nuts. You gotta go around to make sure you take them all out. Once you take this last one out, you can remove the small panel, just pulls off, then you can lift the quarter out of the way and take the big panel off. This is the thermal cutout at the top of the burner box. We have to take this off first. We can take a small flathead screwdriver and pop off the terminals. If you need to label them to remember which, where they went, you can do that. The thermal cutout comes out with a quarter inch nut driver. It comes in a kit because if the thermal fuse goes bad, they want you to change out the high limit thermostat also. So now that we have that out, we can go down to the bottom and take out our high limit thermostat. Same thing, take a flathead screwdriver and pop the wires off. And then put your flathead screwdriver down here and you can probably the high limit thermostat off the terminal. It's probably going to fall out because the only thing that holds it on the top is a little pin that goes through this little hole. Here's the old high limit thermostat and thermal cutoff next to the new ones. If you already have this, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. First we're going to put in the thermal cutout. It goes at the top of the burner tube. It mounts on this little tab and the other side is held in with a screw. Once you have the thermal cutout mounted, we can reconnect the wires. Now we can go down to the lower end of the burner tube and put in the new style high limit thermostat. First thing we have to do is cut the 3 16 wire off the jumper wire. And we need to strip it back a little bit. And then we have to take the gold double connector and connect it to this wire. Once you have the new connector on, make sure you crimp it down good enough so it stays on. Okay, and then we also have to cut the small terminal off the orange wire, strip it back just about a quarter of an inch or so, not much. And then we have to put the new silver connector on here and crimp it down to get a good connection. All right. Now that we have the wiring changed, we can go ahead and put in the new thermostat. It's a different style. It's going to mount with two screws that they gave you. The holes are already there. The only thing you have to do is it doesn't sit in here properly. You have to push this little mounting tab that the other one mounted on out of the way. So just push it up out of the way. Once it's clear, then the new thermostat will sit in there properly. All 
All right, now that we have the new high limit thermostat in there, we can reattach the wires. So the red wire, just like before, is going to go on the top. And then we need to connect the jumper wire that has the double connection first to the orange one. And then onto the bottom of the new thermostat. Once you have the new double wire connected to the lower thermostat, you can take the red wire and connect it onto the heating element terminal. Now that you have everything reconnected, we can put the dryer back together and take it for a test spin. Now that we've replaced the part, we have to put the back panel back on. All you have to do is set the back panel on the vent tube down at the bottom, line up the screw holes, and replace all the screws around the panel. Okay, to put the access cover back on, all we do is put this little tab in the slot and put the one screw in that holds it in. Now that we're done repairing the appliance, we can plug it back in and take it for a test spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.